um, here I have um, another follow-up question, uh, which is, um, you know, that machine learning and Python has been a hot topic for the last couple of years. And IFOA is also encouraging actuaries to get involved in data science. There are a lot of actuaries I know who have started learning Python to keep themselves competitive in the job market. But um, do you think that learning the language is really the solution? The reason I'm asking is because about a few weeks ago, I saw some amazing demos of a mega machine learning model online created by OpenAI. And this AI can write its own poems, articles, and even working code. So to echo back to the previous question, I mean, even if you are technically strong enough, what if you will be replaced by the AI at some point in the future? Okay, I, I, I like to talk to the person who asked this question. Yeah, I, I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, was it your but is it from you yourself? Yeah, that's my original question, yes. So, so it, depends on, uh, it depends on your own uh, attitude and your skill sets and interests, you see. Uh, I, I think all the newer actuaries, uh, okay, you don't actually use much of the statistics you learn or compound interest, but you still mm -hmm. learn it, right? So most yeah. of the newer actuaries you learn data science and machine learning because they are not, they're, they're an extension of statistics. They're extension, of, and because of computing power, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Because uh, if you look into the past, uh, actuaries are people who use uh, compound interest and probability and stochastic process to solve business problems. But to solve our business problems in the future, we will do data science and machine learning. But to you, uh, Shuri, and then it depends on, but you may want to learn a bit, but you don't want to be a specialist because you don't want to be a programmer. But you want That's to know right. enough. You want to know enough so that you are part of the conversation in your uh, when you go for an interview. You are, yeah. I, I actually attended a program on Python in, in a part of business program. Uh, but then I know how it's done, but I'm not going to spend my time doing it because I know how to get other people to do it. But you do not, <laughs> because the key to mastery is to, have, to, is to have understanding and not to have fear. But once you see it, ah, it's actually like that. So I wrote a program on how to play, how to design a game. Ah, actually, a lot of it is packages. Uh, it's choosing the right parts of the program to use to send the ping pong up, ball up and down in a game. Yeah? So you got it. Mm. But to, to be a specialist, I knew that I could spend 10 weeks doing it. Would I do 10 weeks of that or 10 weeks on philosophy? I'll do 10 weeks on philosophy or the history of maths because that might interest it. So you got to ask yourself, what if, but that may not apply to another young man whose hmm. interest is actually in programs, yeah? So he had to go deeper. He has to go deeper, right? And some uh -huh. of us go deeper into, uh, into uh, COVID-19 or into mortality. They go really deep, you know, in the mortality uh, bulletin. They really go into subclasses, uh, uh, cross-morbidity and multi-factor analysis, which is great. But I don't need to know that. I know how to tap on people to know that, right? So you got to ask yourself what is right for you. At this stage of your career, I assume you say that you are you have been working for ten years, right? So at this, so you may not want to learn it because you are not going to be a super duper R programmer. I don't think you will, but you could yeah. be an organizer for uh, a company working in Asia. So you you got to play to your interests, your mm -hmm. interests as well uh, as your capability. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so you you got to be self aware. So, so the advice will vary, will vary, right? Um, yeah. So a person who is working in Prudential or whoever, or maybe in a consulting firm, and they are doing IFR 17, uh, AI can replace a lot of our tasks, but for the next 10 years, because AI is good at narrow intelligence, yeah, not general intelligence. So you give them AI Go or, yeah. or chess, they can play and outbeat us. But you cannot say AI cook, Cook quite fried kwetiau for me. They can't, you see. Only the robot with fried kwetiau can do fried kwetiau. So it's called general intelligence. But there are scientists who believe that by the year 2050, robots are capable of frying kwetiau and playing Go and choosing what to say and write poems at the same time. But they are not there yet. Yeah, they're not there. Yeah, so that that's what I heard as well. But, but, that, but that doesn't mean that you should uh, not learn AI or anything because the next 10th year, we still need human beings. For the next 15 years, human beings. In the next 50 years, the actual, or 75 years, the profession might not exist because insurance will be organized differently and societies might be organized differently, right? And I yeah. you can play that game, right? Uh, with uh, Elon Musk, you know, who, you know he thinks that he, he should not be in Mars, right? Okay. 
we can play the game. But that game is a, a, a different level of conversation compared to the level we are on. Our level is to make sure that the people in this conversation have a thriving mm -hmm. career in the next 10 to 15 years. And to have a thriving career, you must be able to be, uh, to be in a conversation. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And to be in a conversation, you've got to be curious. Yeah? You must know what is happening uh, in your adjacent domains and it better still in an independent domain. Because if you're an independent domain, you can then have leverage. Yeah? You have leverage. So I, I have psychology, we can go back into that. I have psychology and a lot of other interests. So, mm -hmm. so you, you have to think of it, some of you are thinking this conversation is about uh, career and corporate success and that is correct uh, at this stage of your life. But a lot, and you will find out You'll get there. Uh, you'll get there. I, it, it, it is, it might, it, it's amazing that I'm the president, right? I'm a small town, small village. You come to my village today, it's still a small village yeah, in Malaysia. I'm very impressed. But actually, after, after you achieve whatever success you describe, even if you ask Jack Ma, you know, after a while, a lot of things in life is, uh, is independent of that role. Although, I'm not saying it's unimportant, it's important. But you also must equip yourself to have an interesting life, uh, to have an engaging life, to have a meaningful life, whatever that means to you, whatever that means to you. Yeah. Uh, so, so you 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 really need to pursue your interest in the spirit of um, Steve Jobs, right? Steve Jobs say that uh, stay hungry and be foolish and follow your passion. He, he went to study typography, and we heard about that typography because he loves the beauty of the fonts, yeah. But that is uh -huh. uh, in the formulation of the Apple computer when it came, yeah, about the font size and the curvature uh, of the key set and all that, right? So, so, so it, but he didn't know that he was going to run Apple, right? He didn't know that he's going to have iPod, but he followed his instinct, right? Because he can, it's an eater in the air. And all of us have this eater, right? It's a, this eater. So you, you, and, and it's because you will attract the ideas which are important to you, but you've got to be curious, right? Stay alive. Network, and I, when I network, I don't mean relationship build, but, but network into systems, structural holes, yeah? Social mm -hmm. system, contact with people. Okay, thank you, Suji. This is very helpful. And um, this will lead to the second topic, which I'm hoping you could touch upon, which is the possibilities for actuaries to work outside the traditional domains. So I noticed in your CV that you've been working in the traditional life insurance sector for 20 years and then you did a master in organizational psychology, which was very different. Do you mind sharing, sharing with us why you did organizational psychology and how did it help you in your career and your life at the later stage? It is uh, it's out of my passion. Yeah? So, uh, uh, so I, I, I was intrigued uh, by uh, psychologists on the London Business School and the Cranfield School uh, faculty uh, when mm -hmm. I was about 30 years old. Uh, and I, I'm still, in, in fact, I'm writing to one of them to become our thought leadership lecturer uh, in my presidential term. Yeah? Uh, and I was intrigued and I studied about psychological types and how teams are designed. I said, this is really quite cool. Uh, and I bought a lot of books in the 1990s, which is, I mean, the 30s at the time, uh, age 30s, yeah, uh, on psychological types. And I had, had done many short courses, uh, Myers-Briggs, Transactional Analysis, Fibro B, Enneagram, uh, uh, Big Five. I've done all these programs, uh, 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 culture and all that, yeah, because I was intrigued and curious. So I, I left Prudential because I, I, I was a bit bored and also I could have picked Quite early, I became a CEO at the age of 34. So by the time I'm 40, 41, I was a regional MD looking after Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Thailand, and I was an entry team for India and all that. And I, I didn't quite enjoy uh, uh, the, the office uh, issues at that time. So I left, I, I went to Columbia to study my passion, but I really was interested in psychology and I was, and I wanted to do organizational change and transformation because in Prudential, I was more into that area. So when I did the one, the, 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 the 18 months I spent in New York was one of the best periods I did. I was 41 years old, 40 years old, because it reduced 
very strong intellectual foundation into psychology, into economics, into philosophy and all that. And I did an into literature because I was interested. And then and then I worked in a human resource. You missed that just now. I was, I was in a human resource firm. Uh, it's a listed company called Saville Horsworth, but now it's bought over by private equity. Named after two very famous British occupational psychologists, yeah, Saville and Horsworth. I was with them for six years, uh, four years, after the two years. And I was at Asia Pack Head, and I learned a great deal about running a different business model. Then I went to NTU. Okay, so how did that help me? Uh, uh, psychology, uh, I was into psychology and culture, good dynamics and organizational change. They're all linked. Psychology is about individuals and personality types. Groups are about group dynamics, organization about organization. Anthropology is about society and societal change. So I'm always interested in change and, and how systems cope with change. What I'm trying to do uh, at IFOA uh, is to, to engineer, to help and encourage a change in governance and a change in culture because we do not feel that we are responsive enough, we are member-centric enough, and we are not um, uh, responsive means speedy, uh, and, and the degree of ownership is not high enough. Yeah, I'll be very authentic in this. I, I will say this consistently wherever I go. So that is my campaign. But for that to change, the governance has to change. For governance has to change, the culture of actuaries has to change. Culture is a mindset. Mindset actuaries are very careful, detailed, consistent, and therefore they want to cross all the T's and dot all the I's before they change. But in the world of digital, that's not going to work. Yeah, in the world of COVID-19, that's not going to work. You've got to trust your instincts and you've got to use metaphors and narratives for your conversations. Yeah. Uh, so this whole body of work is, is another... Uh, webinar uh, because it's about transformation systems thinking certain order thinkings and levels of work uh, and and i couldn't do the role in i the way i'm doing it if i don't have the experience in, in ntuc and also columbia because i'm attempting to change the system not mm -hmm. being an ambassadorial role as a president uh, ambassadorial role means i go and shake hands and give speeches uh, I, I can do that as well but I'm less interested in that. I want to see change so that the profession will be an exciting profession uh, with a social purpose, but at the same time, very rewarding for our members within our primary domains, but also in new domains where our anchor uh, can add value, can add value. And I also think that we are playing too low a game in, in UK. Uh, we are not speaking up on important issues we can exert influence on we become a rule taker, a receiver of change rather than an agent of change. It was not like that 30 years ago. 30 years ago, it was like the actuaries were on the front foot, but we made mistakes since then. Uh, the biggest mistake was the equitable line and then, then the Morris report. And then there's a big read. But then Chinese will tell you uh, there are cycles in life, right? So they are, these are all the cycles and every problem has a solution and a new solution will bring a new set of problems. So you've got to be a bit philosophical as well at times. Okay, so like you said, I mean, apart from the core domains, you want the actuaries to, to explore in the new areas. So, in, in, so, so which other areas or sector you think that actuaries can um, add value and can be influential? I, I think in, uh, in data science consulting, in uh, banking, health ecosystem, uh, 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 com uh, platform companies, there's a Malaysian actually working for Huawei, you know, in, 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 in UK, and there are many actuaries in Singapore working for uh, Grab, which is equivalent to Uber in Singapore, but, uh, but they are not necessarily FIAs, but they are d degree holders in actual science. Uh, mm -hmm. And in Australia, a lot of actuaries left life insurance because of regulation and one of them form a company called Quantum and you can go to uh, one of the presentations where they list all the actuaries who work in different areas in regulation and policy and consulting but a lot of it uh, has a common denominator that they deal with data so if you are with a consulting firm you will have exposure to, to more variety of work yeah? uh, because of the way we think so, so you've got a practical issue, right? Uh, the people who give you study leave and secure job will be traditional. So you go there. At some point, you can go as far as you want, uh, and be, but always remain curious and engaged. You can also switch country or switch function, go to marketing, operations, then you'll learn new things. But you, uh, the new thing, right? Uh, but, but from time to time, 
uh, there could be a restructuring, you may leave the company, and then you start something else. And there are so many stories of actuaries uh, working on their own, doing projects, or, be, or start an ed educational business, or whatever. So you got to play, uh, you, you got to, because the world where you do only one job for the rest of your life is, is going to uh, disappear, I think. So you can jump. You can jump to adjacent. Banking is an interesting one. Climate science is an interesting one. Health ecosystem is an interesting one. Because uh, 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 or even credit card companies, as long as they're data, then the practical issue is that will I get the same pay? Ah, okay, you, you might not get the same pay because it's not as reserved as where you are now. So, so the higher, higher you are, the harder it is to switch unless you've got additional skills. Eh? You've got additional skills. I switch from a life uh, to a HR uh, head, uh, I, I, I think my long-term incentive was lower, but my pay was protected and I, I switched. I switched. Uh, but, my skill, but my skill was more of a CEO skill, yeah? more of a CEO skill. Uh, they, they were not after my actual skill, yeah? so my CEO skill. So my, I, I feel that the work I, I like to do after I go it will probably has to do with transformation because I'm curious about that, yeah. And and that has so many dynamics. So you got to find what is in your secret sauce, right? So your secret sauce and Gina's secret sauce, right? right? Gina might go back and do something. Uh, uh, a fintech. Fintech is a great area. There are many actuaries working in fintech, yeah, because they they their numbers, they are, they understand business model, uh, and sometimes. They do it not because of choice. Uh. Sometimes it could be their existing employer have uh, uh, restructuring. Or, but, but many actors are working in uh, got a number of permutations. Uh, got a number of permutations. Uh, but, but I think the answer will vary, will vary uh, according to the individual. But I also will tell you, when you have setbacks, uh, when you have setbacks, don't think it's permanent. It's not permanent. Uh, the only thing is that you don't give up. Yeah? Don't give up and be curious and be persevere. I, I have uh, uh, setbacks yeah, in my life. Yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. Setbacks in my life. Uh, and, uh, all of us do. Uh, uh, in fact, we have setbacks from uh, month to month, but they are small setbacks. Uh, but, but they are... Uh, make your disadvantage an advantage. Yeah? A disadvantage into an advantage. That's great. Thank you, Suchi. This is very insightful.